Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you three string functions that are missing from Excel VBA. And not only are we going to cover these functions, I'm going to show you how you can create them yourself. Now, if you don't want to go to the trouble of creating them yourself, then you can download them from the description below. But it's still worth looking through this video just to make sure that you understand what they are. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you want to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. OK, so let's get started with the very first function. So the first string function that's missing from Excel VBA is one that counts the number of occurrences of a character or a number of characters in a string. So in other words, we have the text here, Mary had a little lamb. And we want to find out how many times does the letter A occur. Now, there's no native function in VBA for doing this. So what we do is create our own. And we do it like this. We get the length of the text. And then we're basically saying, give us the length of the text and subtract the same text without any A's. And how we get rid of the A's is by using replace. So we replace the text and we replace letter A and we replace that with an empty string. And that should give us back the result. Now, when we run this code, let's bring up the immediate window and that's control G and that will give us an idea of a result. And when we run this code, you can see that it says the number of characters is four because there is actually four A's. Now, by default, the replace function is case sensitive. So if we make A big and then we run this code, you can see that it says the number of characters is three. So if we want to make it case insensitive, in other words, it, it ignores whether the A is big or small, it just counts them all, then we have to use the parameter in replace called compare. So we say compare equals, and this is VB text compare. So binary compare is the default, but text compare is the one that ignores. So it's not case sensitive. It ignores the difference between the letters A. So let's run this code. And you can see that it gave us four characters because there is indeed four A's. So this code does a good job, but there's one more thing that we must add. Now, imagine we want to look for the occurrences of two letter A's. So let's put two letter A's in certain places in our string. So we've got two occurrences. Now, if we run this code, it won't work correctly. So let's, let's go ahead, we'll run it now. And you can see it said the number of characters is four because it's basically counting the times that it occurred. So it occurred twice, but it actually replaced double A twice, which it actually replaced four characters. So that's why the answer is four. So we've got to do one more thing. What we've got to do is divide by the length of the character. Now, you don't need to worry if this is too complicated because basically we're just using the same, we're going to use the same code every time to solve this problem. And you'll see in a minute that I've created a function to do it. So we divide it by the length of the text that we're searching from. And then this should give us the correct answer as two. So let's run the code again. You should see it gave us two. Now let's just make it more clear. Let's just put Mary in the string three times. So that is very obvious. I'm going to put one in the middle, one at the very end, and one at the start. And so what we would expect is that we get back three. So let's run the code and you will see that we got back three. So Mary appears three times. Now this code is kind of ugly to be sticking kind of everywhere. Every time that you want to do this to be kind of putting it all around your code in, in your different applications. So what we do is we create our own function and it looks like this. So let's get rid of the immediate window. You can see that it's doing pretty much the same thing but we're just passing the different items that we're going to use as parameters. And so if we look up here, you can see how we use it. We call count characters in string. We just pass it our text. We pass it what we want to search for. So in this case, lamb, and we basically specify our text, whether it's to be sensitive or insensitive. So let's run this code to see how many times lamb appears. And you can see substring lamb appears two times. Um, so let's try this again with, let's say we'll do Mary this time. So Mary only appears once. So substring Mary appears one time. So this is the count cars 
in string and this is how you basically implement it. So the second function we're going to look at is a function for cleaning a string like this. So we've got a string, Mary had a little lamb and it's got a varying number of spaces between each word. And what we want to do is we want to clean up the string so that there's only one space before each word. So like we see in the result. So you may want to try this for yourself before you see how I did it in this video. There's actually two ways that I did it. So let's look at both of them. We'll look at the first one. So the first one is called clean and it's clean string using loop. And we simply pass it the text and we pass it the character that we want to replace. So we want to remove the multiple entries of that character and leave just one in very simple terms. So let's step through the code. How I did it was as follows. We take the string, we replace two spaces and we replace two spaces with one. And we essentially keep doing this until there's only one space left. So let's add this to our watch window. So you can see it says Mary has a little lamb. Now we're going to replace and now you can see that in some of them we're just down to one space. So at the end of our loop what I'm basically saying is if it finds two spaces, so two of the character, if it finds two of the characters, then the loop will continue going. Otherwise the loop will end. Now what the string function does basically is the string function creates a string of characters. So in this case, we're giving it a space and we're basically saying create a string of two characters. So that's what string two comma val does. We don't finish this time. It does another replace and then it tries again, it says, is there somewhere in the loop that has two spaces or more? There is, so it's gonna keep replacing until it reaches a point where there's none left. And then at this point it's reached up, it sends back the text, and then it prints out the result to the immediate window. So let's open the immediate window and let's step over this line and you can see it printed it out with all the spaces removed. So again, let's have a, a, just a quick look at what we did. Basically, string to val is just going to give us a string of two spaces. So that's all it does. So the reason we do it like this is because we're passing the parameter as a space and we want to say whatever the parameter we passed, we want to create a string twice that size. And then what we basically do is we replace all places where there's two occurrence of this with one occurrence. And so we keep doing this basically until there's only one occurrence between each word. In other words, there's nowhere in the string that there's two spaces left. So now the second way that we did this is using what we call regular expressions. Now, if you don't know what regular expressions are, I've got a whole video playlist on them that you can see. But basically regular expressions allow us to do very, very powerful things to strings or pieces of text. So we'll see exactly how we do it by stepping through the code. Again, we get our text and then we pass our text to this function that's gonna do all the magic. Um, what it does, it's just checking if basically the values are okay here. And then it goes down, we create the regular expression. Global just means it's gonna to apply to all the string. It's just really a default that we use all the time. And then we set the pattern. So the pattern is what we search for. Now in this case, what the pattern really means is it's like a space followed by a plus. So what a plus does is it says multiple occurrences of this. So basically it's gonna look for a pattern in the string where there's multiple occurrences of the space. Once the pattern is set then, all we've got to do is do our replace. And what the replace simply does is it replace anywhere that there's multiple spaces, it will replace them with one. So let's see exactly how that happens by looking in the watch window. We put in the dirty string, which is the original string, and then we put in the clean string, which will be what the string equals after we make the change. So watch now, as we step over this line, you'll see what the clean string becomes. And you see, it becomes Mary had a little lamb with one space between each word. So our regular expressions have replaced the dirty string with the clean string based on the pattern that we set, which was basically space followed by the plus sign. And then we go back and it simply prints out the result. So the result is Mary had a little lamb without the spaces as we have seen. And that's how we can clean a string in Excel VBA. 
When I started programming originally and I was using languages such as C and C++, a function I used a lot was sprintf or sprintf as is properly known. And what it basically does is it makes it easy to format a string. Now when we've got a string in Visual Basic, you see that we build a string like this. We have a whole mixture of the text and we use ampersand along with the variables that we're going to use to build up the string. So this can be very messy, very difficult to read and difficult to change. And if we had our own sprintf function, it would make things much easier. But let's run this code anyway, just to see what happens. And you can see it says value wrong for cell in the worksheet, in the workbook and so on. Now you'll note that I use square parentheses here. And the reason that I use them is just to make it easy to see the different, the kind of values that we're trying to show to the user. Now, if we created a sprint F function, then things would be much easier. So this message is, is basically the same as the one above, but the difference is this. We have all of our text in one place. So we're not using ampersand to kind of patch it all together. And what we do instead is we use placeholders. So the placeholder is the percentage sign one for the first one, percentage sign two for the second, and so on. And these basically match with our parameters here. So this is our list of parameters. Now, these are of course on the same line, but I'm just separating it to make it look easier. So if you want to put one line over two in VB, we use the underscore and that allows us to put one line over two. Now, so you can see that it makes the code much more readable. If we wanted to change a variable, like say we wanted to change the sheet name to something else, very easy to see where it is. And if we wanted to move variables around, all we'd have to do is say, this one is two, this one is one. It just makes the code much more readable and much easier to update. So let's put it back to one and let's put it back to two. And when I run this code, you'll see that it says value wrong for cell A1. So it's the very same. But as I said, if we wanted to change, if I wanted to put the date first and say I wanted to put the cell last, it's only a matter of changing these numbers, four and one. And then we run the code again. You can see that the date is first and the value that we're showing as the cell address is last. Now, obviously we'd have to make some changes to the text, but it just means that the text is very, very easy to update. So let's step through the code. I just want to, to show exactly what we're doing and we'll comment out these lines. So we step through the code and this is the sprint F. Now this, this function is a bit complicated, but you don't have to worry. You can just download this from the description below the video and just use it. You don't have to really understand it. You just have to know that it works fine. We step through, we're saying basically, if there's an error, jump down to the end. And then what we're doing is we're going through all the strings in the parameter and we're basically just replacing them. So if it if the type name, if it isn't a string that we've got, we're basically just gonna throw an error. So a lot of this code is just really throwing the error. But if it's okay, we're simply replacing the text with what's in the first string. So in this case, we're replacing one with the address. Now the next time we're going to be replacing the sheet name. So this is the sheet name. I'll just drop it in the watch window so we can see it. And you can see that the sheet name is fruit. I'll put actually a breakpoint here and let's run it on to the next one. And the next one is a, a workbook called string functions, Excel SM. So what's that's going to do? It's going to replace this value, which is basically our placeholder percentage sign three. And then the next time it's replacing percentage sign four with the date. So that's simply how it works. And then we run on the code and you can see it says value wrong and so on. So this makes our life much easier when it comes to building a string. So let's look at just a really simple second one, just in case you don't get it. We can say like message equals s print f, and we want to say workbook name is, and then we just say the workbook name, this workbook dot name. And let's just comment out this code. Now when we run the code, you can see workbook name is string function and dot xlsm and when, when we have it like this it's very easy just to make changes like if you wanted to put square brackets around this very easy because we can see exactly what the string that we're trying to say is whereas when it's like the one up here 
It's just so complicated to read and so easy to make mistakes in it. So this just makes it so much nicer to format our string. So we run this code, you can see now, just that easy we have the square brackets on it. So these are the three VBA functions that they don't exist, they're very, very useful, and I've just shown you today how you can create them for yourself. Now I hope you liked this video. If you did like it, please click on the like button below as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to hear more about my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. Now don't forget, you can get all the code from for this video and you can get it from the description below. Just click on the link. Hope to see you on the next video. And if you have any comments, queries or questions, then please leave them in the comments section below.